Welcome to my platform. This is another series in the prophetic, and this one is 10 things that makes a sharp prophet prophesy accurately as they do. Uh, going to forensic prophecy as they do. Uh, the prophetic is a kind of uh, ministry that is rediscovered or have been rediscovered in the body of Christ of the fivefold ministries and the prophetic is least understood and so not many are acquainted with the secrets that make the prophetic stand out the way it really uh, to stand out god works through the prophetic ministry as much as he works through the evangelism ministry and the pastoral ministry as well as the apostolic and the teaching ministry today it's the era of the prophetic ministry because prophets will usher in the return of the lord as you can see, in case you're new here, before we dive into the teaching proper, go ahead and subscribe to my channel right now. Waste no time. Like this video, comment, and share to bless others. 10 secrets that makes a sharp prophets to prophesy accurately the way they do. Number one is what type of a prophet you are. The type of a prophet that you are will determine what depths you can go. As you prophesy, whether in the beginnings or somewhere in the middle of your ministry or walk with God as a prophet, there are those ones who are chosen prophets that are like prophets that are born as prophets. Of course, whether you are born prophet or if you are born prophet, you must come to a point where you get born again to be able to serve, get born again and be filled with the Spirit of God before God can through his holy spirit make use of you but these ones have got an advantage in that they easily come by accurate prophecies than the other category which are the called prophets or those that become prophets by the reason of service yeah serving around a prophet so that's it of course those that are the called prophets invited uh, prophets these guys can equally prophesy to any accurate level but it takes uh, processes uh, whether you are chosen or a called prophet or you become a prophet by virtue of service every prophet needs to be polished need to be groomed that's god's principle of doing things it's just that those that are chosen prophets if they're groomed they do it easier and better number two thing is the stage you are in your prophetic calling do you have a call do you realize have you been able to pinpoint the fact that you have been called it's crystal clear to you that god called me and gave me prophetic mission it can be apostolic it can be full-time prophetic or fully prophetic invitation or call or it can be evangelism or pastor or teaching but you are prophetic when you do you have to be able to know exactly what God have called you to do. Uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, in chapter 13, in verse 1, believers were praying. The Bible said there were in Antioch uh, teachers and prophets. They were praying there. And God said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. So I sent them out for the mission for which I called them. It was there. They laid hands on them and released them this time around as apostles. But they were originally teachers and prophets these were the only people that were in that meeting teachers and prophets where they are praying but god said separate me so paul was originally a teacher or a prophet of course we have every grounds to agree that he was a prophet originally because of his prophetic inclination as an apostle when he undertook the apostolic cause so what stage in your calling or prophetic calling are you there are those prophets, like in the case of Apostle Paul, that are called either as teachers or called as prophets in the beginning. They begin to serve to a point and God moves them into the apostolic. There are also those that he calls as prophets or as apostles and then eventually unlocks them prophetically like myself. I was brought into the place of the apostolic work before my prophetic assignment was fully unlocked. And that's my functionality. So your stage in your prophetic call determines whether you have come to the place where you can catch up with sharp and smart uh, prophecies so you have to be alive and active spiritually to design which stage you are on the ladder the deeper you are the further you've gone into your calling with god and actively the easier the tendency 
CRE is for you to be able to measure up with the spiritual me mechanisms or prophetic dynamics that allows you to be able to sense things in the realm of the spirit, hear the voice of God with ease, and prophesy therefore to his people. But that point is the stage of oppression with your prophetic senses. I realize that not many prophets or prophetic folks are aware of the engagement of the uh, prophetic senses when it comes to prophesying. And this leads to a uh, kind of uneasiness with prophesying the way they really are to prophesy. Well, if you are prophetically aware, it will also correspond with the fact that you are aware of the fact that you've got prophetic senses and how many prophetic senses are there? Now, what is the function of each of these prophetic senses? How do you come about activating the individual prophetic senses? Now, which of the prophetic senses is more active when you try to engage it? It will also mean that you will have to check out for how much or, or into what depth you are already gone in the prophetic so that uh, your debt with the engagement of a particular prophetic sense, let me say the prophetic sense of sight, which will correspond with your ability to be able to see in the realm of the spirit, which stage are you, to what depth can you see? And when we come to talk about seeing, there are stages here uh, with seeing in the realm of the spirit. Beyond these, we'll be talking about interaction with prophetic realms with that same prophetic sense. So when the prophetic senses are properly activated and you are you aware it becomes easier for you to prophesy from an informed perspective unlike those who just come into ministry into the prophetic and then it's just about praying it's just about speaking in tongues it's just about uh, believing God to give that message not the Bible is written in your language so you can study it because God uh, favors the intellectual as well and the Bible is intellectually balanced as a result of that. So there are prophetic details in the Bible that help you to be able to position yourself to exercise your prophetic senses, whether it's taste or it's seen so that you can see with clarity before you prophesy. So when we prophesy, when we see in the realm of the Spirit, all prophets don't see things in the realm of the Spirit to the same degree. Let me give this example. When you go to the hospital, they use the x-ray to check uh, into somebody's body to know what's wrong with their bone. Some use ultraviolet radiation or uh, scan and so on and so forth. You see, each of these things have a deeper depth of uh, being able to appreciate or serve the doctor or the clinician uh, the access to be able to appreciate internal organs of people to different degrees. So we prophets or uh, as prophets we have been activated on scene to different degrees and of course we can improve on the degree to which we can be activated if we engage in relevant biblical exercises on a daily basis. So we advance and come to the point where you see with crystal clarity in the realm of the Spirit so that you are not seeing things in the realm of the Spirit as somebody who is groping in the dark. You become forensic only from that point forward. Number four is your understanding of the engagement of the prophetic uh, codes. The concept of codes is not... Uh, entirely new although it's a new concept but is as old as the prophetic itself is as old as creation it's as old as the bible because even god himself engaged the prophetic uh, codes only that in scripture you don't just see codes written there as this is so and so code let's go back to the fall of man in genesis chapter 2 Three, where God called unto Adam in the cool of the day. The question was, where are you? And that's the prophetic code of prophetic questions. <laughs> you get that? So even God used that prophetic code to trace the location of Adam. The moment Adam answered that question, God went ahead to disclose to Adam what had happened because Adam uh, had his voice, hid himself somewhere in the garden, and God said, have you eating of these and that and God continued to make his pronouncement. So 
the depth to which you have been acquainted with the concept of prophetic codes will matter in terms of your accuracy with the prophetic today. You remember that uh, the prophets of old, Bible time prophets were accurate. That's true. But today, for us to be as accurate as they are, we need to know what exactly they know. They knew. Most of them had their own codes they engaged. Some of these codes were put together to make the 46 or 66, as some will have it. And researching around these codes will bring you to a place where you are able to prophesy with accuracy. My fifth point is mentorship. If you want to be good, all prophets you see today, and they are smart and they are sharp, a product of prophetic mentors. Even Daniel as a prophet was mentored by the prophet Jeremiah. Traces of the fact existed, even Abraham, our father, had something to learn from Melchizedek, to whom he paid tight. And we saw Joshua taking after Moses. Who exactly was Joshua? He was a prophet before he became a uh, military general or a military general before he became a prophet. Either way, he was a prophet himself because God did not appoint a prophet to lead Joshua and the people of Israel. No, Joshua was the prophet in the place of Moses. Plus his military expertise or acumen that or wit that he possessed. So Joshua was a prophet. But how did he come about becoming a prophet following after Moses. So we didn't notice any place where God specifically called Joshua until it came to the moment of transfer of grace for Moses to leave there. Joshua was produced as a representative for uh, Moses. So you see, I want to make you understand something here. There are prophets who have gone ahead of you and they've got access to some of the nitty-gritties about the prophetic that you don't have access to. So you need their expertise to guide you in terms of these critical secrets of how the prophetic realm is being operated. There and then you will discover that you improve on your prophetic ability and you begin to prophesy like any other sharp prophet that is uh, cited anywhere around the world at a time. My point number six is the prophetic realm, your understanding of death, uh, the prophetic realm. The prophetic realm is vast. People talk about a prophetic realm as if it's a realm where you just break into and you're going to prophesy. Even in the prophetic realm, it is partitioned. That's what I want you to know. The prophetic realm is partitioned. We've got orbits in the prophetic realm, just as you have the uh, universe, we've got the sun there in the middle as the almighty representative of God figure there. In the middle, we've got Mercury, we've got Venus, we've got the earth. So, and these ones have got orbits around the sun. Now, the prophetic realm have got orbits that prophets ply in order to access prophetic accuracy or prophecies that are accuracy with different degrees. So no two prophets can give the same prophecy with 100% accuracy of the same degree, just as I can't guarantee you that the same company produce a black magic camera of any edition. Let me say the latest edition and use it to take picture. If you take it to nano level, for examination, their product, the picture they capture, you discover that there must be something different about them. The fact remains that, grossly speaking, we can prophesy about the same realities. And that because of our position on the prophetic orbit around the prophetic realm, or in the prophetic realm, within the prophetic realm, our prophecies will be uh, at variance a little, but agreeing. Or pointing to the same reality and even within the prophetic orbits in the prophetic realm we've got sub orbits i discovered that we've got orbits there and we've got sub orbits so we've got the first orbit outer we've got the second orbit inside we've got in that second orbit sub orbits there so that when you change orbits just as you have shells around the nucleus in a cell or in an atom that's what how it is so that within a shell you've got subshells and 
some subshells are closer to the nucleus. And so the closer you are to the nucleus of the prophetic realm, the easier it is for you to prophesy with accuracy. I also want to say this as my point number seven, your versatility with the prophetic community. Yeah. Uh, before any prophet can come into the prophetic community, you've got a journey to uh, come through. Uh, we've got or dimensions in which prophets, or major prophets or major seers operate and they operate uh, from the marginary to the feed and then to the community. Those in the community live in prophecy. These ones don't miss prophecy when they prophesy. I said about that. My point number eight will be the issue of your ethics and it corresponds with your spiritual discipline uh, how disciplined are you in relation to that's in terms of your relationship with God? How ethical are you when it comes to prophetic operations? All of these things will contribute to the fact that we allow God to allow you to access the prophetic realm with ease and uh, freely enough. Number nine will be your versatility or exposure with trends and stuff uh, they eventually form the materials that the holy spirit access and allow you to tap into uh, passively or actively uh, in your spirit man when presented with a prophetic case and you begin to prophesy lastly which is my point number 10, we'll be talking about whether you're already in the prophetic office. And if you're in the prophetic office, what stage are you in the prophetic office? This will govern whether you'll be able to prophesy with accurate C or prophesy at forensic level, pinpoint level or not. Now, those of us in the prophetic office have got depths into which we are already operating in the prophetic office. I must tell you this, not everybody in the prophetic office is operating at the same level now in the prophetic office we can prophesy we'll prophesy left and right and all of that but what does it take to be planted in the prophetic office that question number one what also does it takes to be uh, graduated uh, from one stage or level in the prophetic office to the other level these things are things that you do at a basic level uh, behind the scene and eventually the holy spirit looks at you god the father son and the spirit looks at you and now promotes you to a place where prophetically you are sound, you're balanced, you can prophesy any day, any time, and be accurate. And when you speak for God, he stands to speak through you and with power. With this, I bring this video to a close. In case you're blessed, comment, like, and then share to bless others. You want to go deeper into prophetic, sign up for my course, Certificate Course in Forensic Prophecy with the Shiloh School of Seers. See you in Shiloh School of Seers.